Amen. As we go right into the word of God today, we are so grateful and thankful every opportunity we have to share the word of God with you. So as you have your Bibles in your hand, I'm going to call you to get uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, Matthew, the sixth chapter. And we're going to look in a very specific part of scripture. Uh, We won't be before you long, but I want you to pay very close attention because it's our uh, our uh, desire that information becomes application that in your life will be demonstrated the manifestation of God. And that is possible. Ask me how I know, because I just believe God. And again, it wasn't always this way, but the more I continue to build in in my faith uh, as a man of God, as a, a son of God, as a child of God, as a leader in God, the more I can stand flat, flat footed and firmly tell you that what God has done for others, he'll do the same for you. There's no secret what God can do. All right. There's no secret what God can do. All right. So that being said, we're going to go right into the word of God. This is Jesus speaking in this first uh, introduction text. And I'm going to use as a subject for today, uh, moving from faith to faith. This is the part of our series. It's already done. We're going to talk about moving from faith to faith, moving from faith to faith. It is hard to believe it's already done, unless you move from where you are to where you've got to be, where God is taking you, where you need to be. And that's how we can be firmly convinced it's already done. All right, let's go right to the word of the Lord today. Uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 30 and to 33. We're not going to read uh, the entire, but I want to show you something of what Jesus began to deal with as he talks about the issue of the faith of the people, the issue of faith within the people. And I believe, now you may, well, whether you agree or not, it doesn't uh, uh, deny the truth. I believe that one of the greatest challenges you have in your life is not a lack of money. It's not a sickness. It's not lack of connections. It's not not being in the right place. It is a lack of faith. It is a lack of faith. I'm not saying you don't believe. I'm saying that in the way you believe is not according to how you should believe. And that's what we're going to examine today. So let's go right to the word of God. Uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 30 uh, through 31. We're going to read this first, and then we're going to go on. Let's read. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what should we wear? Verse 32. For the pagans run after all of these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen, Uh, as we talk about moving from faith to faith, we see here in verse 31, something very significant, uh, verse verse 32, rather, excuse me, uh, that, that he says, you of little faith, verse 30, rather, he says, why do you have such a little faith? And I love the way it reads in the New Living Translation, because the New Living Translation is so profound in that it says, why do you have so little faith? Jesus was not saying, you don't believe. He said, he was simply saying, eh, you believe, but your faith is not firmly founded on God's ability. You believe in the realm of something. How many of you believe in the realm of something? What does that mean to believe in the realm of something? Let's get ready. It's important that you understand that as a believer, you got to learn how to believe. You got to learn how to believe. I know that sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous to think about. It sounds stupid. What do you mean? I got to learn how to believe as a believer. But the reality is there have been times in all of our lives. And if we're going to be honest, that we know God can do it. However, we don't believe he'll do it for me. I'm going to stop for a moment. I want you to hear what I just said. There's times that you know God can heal. You know God can turn it around. You know God can take one moment and turn your entire life around, but you just simply have issues believing whether he'll do it for you. And if we're honest, it's the the lack in our life, the sickness in our life, the frustrations, the difficulties, all these things have nothing to do with God, but our ability to believe him. I want you to hear what I just said. It has nothing to do with God. You know, the chaotic situation of your family right now had nothing to do with God. 
It's your ability to believe God and to uh, uh, create an environment, an atmosphere of belief and faith and confidence. We will move forward. We will overcome. We will succeed. Now, I want you to realize, write this down. Here's your first Bell Life principle, but I want you to write it down. Watch this here. Your faith is critical to your better life experience. Amen. Our faith is critical to our better life experience. What do I mean by that? Our belief is important. It is necessary for your better life. If you, no matter what your age is or your stage in life, if you do not believe it can get better, you will not get better. But however, the issue is some of you believe, but you only believe a little bit. How do we now? Now, how can you have a little faith? Well, Jesus talked about it. He said, "Hey, you all who are concerned about what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna wear, what's gonna happen with you, this and that, why are you acting like unbelievers? What is the point of acting like unbelievers?" But I want I want you to hear me, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, if if it's already done. If God has already done his part, but we're not seeing it in our lives, it is only safe to assume that it's our part that have not literally been engaged. And I want you to hear me because if you don't have a foundation of faith, then we will automatically doubt if God will do it for us. If you don't have a firm foundation in faith, you will automatically doubt if God will do it for you. So in this series, it's already done. It, this series does not just serve as a declaration, but if you don't believe, it's going to be almost a frustration because you're not going to be able to connect with us. You're going to say, Pastor, I hear you saying it's already done, but I'm feeling undone. Matter of fact, I'm feeling done. And I'm here to tell you that it is not the fact that, that God is not, has not done it. It is the fact that he says, I've done my part. You have to do yours. And the greatest thing he asks you to do, he doesn't ask you to go around and heal. He doesn't ask you to go. Now he does the healing. He may ask you to lay hands, but he does the healing. He may ask you to believe, but he does the manifesting. He may ask you to show up, but he shows out. Are you seeing how the cooperation concept works? That when we do our part, God does his part. Well, regardless of what the situation is, but I want you to understand that if you do not have a foundation, then when we declare it's already done, it will be more of a frustration than a declaration to you. Why? Because if you don't see it be done within your life, doubt will persist. Can we be honest with ourselves? I wish I had a mirror right here that I could put up to the screen. Can you be honest with yourself that your doubt is your biggest issue? Come on, your doubt is why you don't have. Your doubt is why that opportunity went right over you. Your doubt is why that door was closed when you felt it should have been open. You didn't believe. You wanted it. But wanting and believing is two separate things. See, uh, when I wanted to take a seat, I had to believe the, 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 the chair I'm sitting in can hold me up. I can want to take a seat, but if I don't believe it can hold me up, then I'm going to be a little skeptical about sitting. And some of you are like that in your life. You're skeptical about whether God can turn it around because I've been here before, Pastor. I've been down this way, planned before. And let me give you some encouragement. If you keep going round and round and round in the same thing, it's only because you haven't learned the lesson that God through Holy Spirit is trying to bring you through to get you to what he promised Amen. you. He's bringing you through it. Because if we don't pass the test, we'll never be ready for what's next. Did you hear me? If we don't pass the test, we'll never be ready for what's next. We have to work on our faith. We got to get to the point where we understand, okay, I'm making a decision to believe. So I'm going to prepare the atmosphere around me that will support the very decision I'm believing in. If you believe in to be healed, maybe you're facing a, a, a real physical condition right now that not everybody will understand unless they were in it. Well, what healing sayings do you have? What scriptures of healing do you have written down? How often in a day do you allow healing uh, 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 testimonials of people being healed inculcate your mind and your spirit? How often do that happen? And I'm only using healing, but it goes in every area. Maybe you're struggling financially. You're working, but as the scripture says in Haggai, you don't have a, you bring, you work, bring it home to put it in a bag filled with holes. Well, why does that happen? Well, simply because you don't believe you can have wealth. 
You don't believe you could be wealthy. You don't believe the word of God that says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his service. And so because you don't believe every time something wealth is being spoken deep down inside, you're frustrated. How can that be spoken? And I don't have it. Then maybe it's not for me. No, listen to me. All things are possible. Jesus said it, not me, to them that what? Believe. You see why the emphasis got to be put on our faith? And if the emphasis is not on your faith, ladies and gentlemen, you will be exactly what Jesus is saying right here in the scripture. Now look at this here. Let's look at this according to the New Living Translation, Matthew 6, 32. Watch what the scripture says. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows your needs. Whoa, wait a minute. So not only have he already done it, but he's done it according to what he already knows. He already knows the healing you need. He knows the security you need. He knows the new home you need. He knows these things you need. He already knows. And if he's already, if he already knows, that's the all-knowing, the, 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 the theological term here is called omniscience. Mm -hmm. Omniscience means that God knows it all in all. He knows all about all. He knows all in all. Come on, I'm trying to teach you here this morning. He, he's omniscient. He's mm -hmm. all-knowing. And because he knows it all, he knows what's coming next month. He knows what's happening at the beginning of the year. He knows the home. He knows the place. He knows the car. He knows all these things. He knows you need it. And so stop worrying. Because when Matthew 6 chapter is dealing, Jesus is teaching them about worrying. He says, you guys are so inculcated with worry. Why are you? Why are you worrying? Listen, you, are, you got little faith. He didn't say you don't have no faith. And that's the key I want you to understand here. Here's the revelation knowledge here. Jesus is not saying you don't believe. I'm not even saying you don't believe. We're not saying you don't believe. We believe you believe a little bit. You know, uh, our son, AJ, uh, oftentimes when we ask him a question, uh, uh, do you like something, right? And so, you know, in his, his expressive ways, he'll say, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he'll stop right there. And, and I'm like, what? Boy, if you don't explain what, what that means, eh. Well, then he'll go and say, well, well, dad, it's cool, but you know, uh, that, you know, this, that, that, or the other. My point is this, you know, he got that little, and that's how we are in our faith. We got, do I believe God can do it? Eh. Eh. Come on, be honest with yourself. I used to be there, man. I just got so foolish and so childlike, childlike faith that I'm saying, wait a minute. If I see it in God's word, I'm not going to stop. Glory. I'm not going to stop until I experience it in my life. People say, what are you doing? Believe in God. <laughs> yes. But you don't have it yet. I'm still believing God. But they ain't here yet. I'm still believing God. Because it's not a matter of time when it comes to God. It's a matter of your faith that moves it into time. Don't you know all it takes is one decision, one move by the right person in the right position, and your entire life can change. For the better. And all he says to you is not to figure it out, not to calculate it, not to, mm, uh, you know, meander it. No, he just said, believe. So yes, our goal, our the, the, the season that we're in right now is teaching the believer how to believe. And if you can get to that place of believing, and, and even though believing may be uncomfortable because it is not your natural, natural inclination. Think about it. Some oftentimes when things happen in our life, the first inclination we go to is the negative. The first time somebody said, I, I, I never forget it. I was uh, dating Pastor Michelle. Well, about to date her. I, my very first conversation with her, I was nervous about her saying yes to meeting me for coffee. You was nervous in the service. I was nervous in the service. I was. I was very nervous in the service. I, I, I said, well, you know, this powerful woman just preached at my church. Many of you who don't know, don't know our story. If you do know our story, then, okay, take a moment. Uh, but I was pastoring a church. She was pastoring a church. I invited her to come in and speak on the Holy Spirit at my traditional Baptist church, uh, which wasn't spirit-filled, but they brought me in as a spirit-filled leader. And then I'm like, wow, these people got to be in, inundated with the Holy Spirit. So I said, I need to bring somebody in who's going to go forth and allow the Lord to use them. Now, my, my administrator at the time uh, began to uh, look in the newspaper and said, well, uh, Pastor, what about this? Because I didn't want to bring in none of my friends. My friends would have came in and they would have preached the house. Ah, anybody here? Uh, come on, somebody. And all everybody would have said, preach, Reverend, say it, Reverend. And that would have been the whole experience. But I didn't want that. I wanted life change. 
So when the Holy Spirit led us to call in this pastor Lachelle, who had passing her very own church, my administrator got me the information. Said, "Here's Pastor Lachelle. Uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, you want her information?" I said, "Yeah, I really couldn't see her picture. God, thank God I couldn't, because I couldn't see how beautiful she was. I mean, the picture that she had in the, in the directory of pastors was a little graniated, so it wasn't as clear. What? And I, I believe that was for a purpose because I wasn't choosing her based upon her beauty. Uh, she was chosen based upon her brilliance in the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's a side note for those of you who are looking for somebody. Don't get a CD. Get a B." What does that mean? Don't get somebody who's cute and dumb. Get somebody who's beautiful and brilliant. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, uh, but anyway, so I, I bring her, we bring her in and she comes in uh, to this empowerment service and we're packed out. The church is packed out and she comes in prophesying and she comes in moving by way of the Holy Spirit. And she went up to one of the mothers in the church who, 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 was, who wasn't uh, fully inundated in the Holy Spirit. She laid hands on her. And the mother fell out under the power of God. She prophesied to her when the mother fell down, who totally stood up in my Bible study and said, Reverend, I know you teach about the Holy Spirit, but we don't believe in all that hook and machanda stuff. The mother, of the, 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 one of the mothers of the church told me that as a new pastor, you're teaching on the ecstatic manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the pneuma, the Haggai pneuma, but we don't believe in that here. And literally, it became a point of contention, except when Pastor Shell went lay hands on the mother, the mother fell out on the power of the Holy Spirit. At that point, I knew. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I need that type of anointing in my life. Glory to God. And, I, and here's the point. The point was, I was, I was uh, uh, getting ready to call her up, and I was practicing before I called her up. I had to get my Barry White on. I, I, I wish I had somebody who understood what I mean. I had to get my Barry White on now. I already don't have a naturally deep voice, but I got a little deep because I wanted to call her up with the confidence of knowing that I'm the one. But anyway, so I, here's the point that I'm saying. Uh, when I called her up, my fear was that she would turn me down because, uh, you know, she came in very spiritual. I, I gave no indication that I was interested. I gave no indication at all. Right after the service was over, a powerful move of God, anointing fell. It was just amazing. Uh, right afterwards, I called her up, not the same day, the next day, called her up and I said, and I was practicing. I said, um, uh, hello, Pastor Shell. This is Pastor Blue. I would like to invite you. No, I don't like that sound. Uh, hello, Pastor Shell. This is Pastor Blue. I, I don't like that hello hey hi. no i don't like that uh, yo what's up mama no i didn't do all that <laughs> I, I, I finally got to the point where i said uh and i said I, I didn't want her to turn me down i was nervous i'd never been nervous when it came to women but i was nervous when it came to her i i got to the point i said uh hey pastor shell listen this is pastor blue we had a powerful time yesterday i want to know if i can invite you out for coffee mm -hmm. now i was afraid of her saying no and watch this here because i was afraid of her saying no <laughs> I said, would you, I'd like to invite you for coffee. The first thing she said was, no. And immediately I froze. Because the thing I feared was the thing that happened. But she didn't finish the conversation. She said, no, I don't drink coffee. <laughs> so I said, hey, let's go out for tea. Let's go for ice cream, cake, candy, whatever you want. Didn't let me take you out, you know. My point is this. The thing that I feared was the thing that appeared to happen. But because my belief was so strong, I would not stop at the, I'm trying to talk to somebody. When you believe, even when they say your credit ain't where it should be, I'm still believing for the house. Even when they say, well, can't move in this neighborhood because only a certain type of people, I'm still believing for the house. I'm still believing for this. I'm still, you gotta be so firmly planted. I believed that she was gonna go out with me. And y'all see it, after 20 years, she's still out with me. <laughs> Glory to God. Under challenges, circumstances, situations, we still here. And the point is the foundation of faith. I only told that story to get you to the point of understanding that when you firmly believe and everything around you appears not to be, uh-uh, God, you said it. So I believe it. And that right there is what shall happen. So I want you to understand that if we can just take this season, this time right now, and focus on building our faith and our beliefs in God's ability to give us the better life, then we will walk as believers knowing it's already done. It's already done. Yes. Now you become a witness and a light to others knowing it's already done. Let me show you how powerful the belief system is. You ready? Your beliefs are so powerful. A person's beliefs are so powerful that it determines the type of food they eat. Think about it. Uh, those who are of certain faiths do not eat pork. Now, I personally don't eat pork. I haven't ate pork in years. 
Now that's me personally. I'm not going to put that on you. I don't eat pork. You can't pay me to eat pork. I used to like bacon, no faking bacon, but the real bacon. Amen. So I became vegan and we got the faking bacon, but it tastes good. But I used to like bacon. I used to like pork chops. I used to, my mom, my mom will tell you, I, used, I, I, you know, I used to cook, uh, 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 I call it blue chops, but pork chops, I, you know, put my little spin on it, my little spices. And I used to like all that. But watch this here. When I begin to understand certain things about the pig, I said, oh, no, not for me. And here's my point. My belief is what brings me to the place that if something is even made with pork, I'm not touching it. I don't even want it. Now, not a, a faith thing that I push on you, but it's a point that what you believe is so powerful that it determines the food you eat, the people you hang around, the places you go, and the things you receive. Your beliefs are, are important. Your beliefs are powerful. I'm reminded of a quick story uh, of the, called the placebo effect. Oh, and some of you may understand this, but the placebo effect was an experiment that was done with two groups of people who all had a sickness. They had an illness. And in these two groups of people, they gave one group the real medication. The other group, they gave what is called a placebo pill, which is nothing more but a sugar pill. And all among this group, both groups, group A and group B, group B that got the sugar pill and group A that got the real medication, they told him, but they told all of them, by taking this medication, you will be well. And the people who were taking the medication believed. Every one of them, all both groups, they both believe. Okay, we're well, fine. Your doctor said we're gonna be well. We believe we're gonna be well. Well, guess what they did when they saw the study? The more people who took the placebo, the sugar pill. Was, was healed or made well quicker than the people who took the real actual medication. Now, what happened there? Wasn't the medication supposed to heal? Well, those who took the real medication had side effects. Those who took the placebo, they were perfectly made well. Now, you might say, well, well how did that happen? Well, they believed so strong in what they were doing that literally their body began to heal themselves. Their body responded according to the what? Faith. Yes. And even though they had a sugar pill that had no healing properties, their condition was healed. And it baffled the scientists. It baffled them who were doing this clinical study because they said, whoa, wait a minute. Now, of course, they're not running around just giving people because that, 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 will, that will bankrupt the medical industry because billions, <laughs> trillions are made of the pharmaceutical, uh, 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 pharmaceutical uh, industry uh, by giving you medications. But the point is, these people were changed because they believed they, they were getting better, even though they thought we were taking something. And this, was, this is what you could take away from this, that, that when it comes to believing, you got to take action in agreement what, what you believe. I'm trying to teach you something here. You got to take action in a direction of what you believe. If I'm believing God for a new job, I'm not going to just sit around and stay with the same skills. No, I'm going to polish up my skills. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So when I go out for that, I'm going to let them know, listen, you got to have me a part of your company because I'm going to make your company better. <laughs> I'm going to be the best thing you ever had a part of this company. Matter of fact, your department is about to go up 10 times because I'm a part of it because I bring value. See, that belief is so powerful and it's so contagious. And this is what Jesus is saying. He said, you got to watch your belief. You know, belief is so important that belief and, and um, even your confidence becomes your level of currency. A lot of people are bankrupt because they don't believe. Come on. You don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in the power of God. You don't believe that something that may have been bitter for 20 years can become bitter in the twinkling of an eye. Come when on. You understand the power of your belief. You can have had limited belief for 30 years, but the moment you start believing, everything can change at a moment's notice. That's you gotta right. believe so strong that you're not sitting here waiting for the moment, but you seize the moment by operating as if it's already done where nobody can sway you nobody can convince you that it's not already done because your confidence becomes your currency you're walking in confidence in God's word instead of just your ability and sometimes that's what happens we put God in the box of our ability and so because we have limited ability we limit God's ability my God my God has no no uh lock or no hook matter of fact there is not even a box I don't even know where the box came from think out 
outside the box, live outside the box. We weren't created in the box. We serve a God with no limits, no boundaries. He can do whatever he wants, when he wants, how he wants. But the key thing is going to take your belief. You got to be confident in the word of God and don't believe the word of God according to your belief systems of how man disappointed you because many people are living like that. They're living according to their past pain opposed to uh, God's promises and the prophetic word that he's spoken about your future. This is why we always say that your destiny far outweighs your history because if you are trying to judge your past, uh, your uh, future according to the results of your past, it will then weaken your ability to believe. But when you're able to believe against all shadows of doubt, including past history, past attempts, well, I tried it before and it didn't work. Well, thank you, God, for the newfound wisdom. Thank you for the newfound revelation Come on, Pastor that Shell. this time is going to happen. This, this time, time is coming into fruition. This, this time, time is going to happen. This time, I'm going to make an impact and a difference. You got to know that there is a this time that is awaiting your arrival, but it's all predicated according to your belief. Somebody shout this time. This time. Somebody shout this time. This time. This is why this season is necessary. Yes. This is why this season is important. Oh, so, yes. so what should we be believing? Pastor Shell, uh, Pastor Blue, Pastor Shell, you're talking about believing, but what should we be believing? You ready? God's promises. Yes. We got to believe in his promises. We got to believe that the 6,000, that's right. Somebody yes. write that down. How many promises is in the word of God? 6,000 promises is contained in the word of God. That 6,000 of those promises are available for you. Not for certain people, not for certain, for you. Jesus says, listen, the unbeliever worry about these things shouldn't be you. Why? Because as a believer, you got to seek first what the kingdom of God and watch this all things will be added unto you. Everything will be added unto you. Everything needed and necessary, things you didn't even know you need will begin to be added unto you. Why? Because I'm putting him first. I'm prioritizing. I'm saying, God, your way over my way, your will over my will. And if it's in your will, you're going to pay the bill. That's it. You know, one thing that I love about the kingdom, which a lot of people fail to recognize or realize, and people will say, well, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, but they will negate the kingdom, the kingdom. There is no broke kingdom. Show me a broke kingdom in the natural or the kingdom of God. And because the kingdom is not broken, he completed you in a, a non-broken state. You were created in a complete state. And this is why we got to operate under the power of the kingdom of God, because many people are operating in a depleted state, but the kingdom of God allows you to understand the power of your completed state. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing, nothing lacking. Lacked. You are no longer in the state of depletion. He has given you completion. Every single thing that you need according to life and godliness, he said it's in the kingdom. But where is the kingdom? It's not a destination in the sky in the sweet by and by. The kingdom is a method of operation in your mind, your mouth, and your movement. Come it on. has to be in alignment with what God's word has already spoken. That's the greatest form of poetry is speaking the spoken word. When you speak what he has spoken, when you declare, I am complete, I am whole, I am healed, I am delivered, my family is unified. We are walking in abundance. We are blessed. A, birth, a, a favor is our birthright. When you start speaking kingdom language, then kingdom manifestations have to happen on your behalf. But you cannot desire it, but not be willing to do the work in your mind, your mouth, and your actions. You have to think as if it's already done. You have to speak as if it's already done. You got to operate as if it's already done. And that's how you move from faith to faith. You allow your faith to elevate. And this is why so many believers are living lowly because they are failing to activate their faith that will cause them to elevate. They've been praying for it, right. but they have been have not been putting it into practice of operating into stronger beliefs. Like God, I believe your word and that settles it. I take your word at face value. I'm taking your word to the bank and it's going to cash and I'm going to live that abundant life because I'm living in kingdom economics. See, when you understand the power of kingdom, there is no recession in kingdom. No. There's no lackage in kingdom. No. There is no voidance in, no. in kingdom. There's no darkness in kingdom. Every single thing that you need is in the kingdom. Amen. And it's according to what he promised. Yeah. Now let's look at the Abraham the father yeah. of faith. We know Abraham as the father of faith. Ready? Let's go to this scripture. Watch it. Come on. We almost done. Uh, Romans, the fourth chapter, 
verse 20 through 21. We're going to read it from the New Living Translation. That's Romans, the fourth chapter, Romans 4, 20 and 21. Let's see what the word of the Lord says here. Come on, let's read. Abram never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. Faith to faith, come on. And in this, he brought glory unto God. He was fully convinced that God is able huh. to do whatever come on, he God. promised. Look at that. Our daddy says, I'm able to do what is promised. And as you see here that the father of faith, that's the reason why Abraham was called the father of faith. Because he believed God. Not And now again, when put this in proper context, when God told him that hey, you're going to have a baby, you and Sarai, he didn't have any children. His name was Abram. Her name was Sarai. He says, I'm changing your name because your circumstance is going to change. Sometimes you got to change your name for the new season. Call me blessed. Okay. Don't call me my name. I'm blessed. I'm better than ever. That's, as a matter of fact, when somebody asks you, how are you? Better than ever? That, that's my new name. What's your name? Better than ever? Better than ever, Paula. That's what we got. That's your name. Better than, come on. Uh, uh, blessed by the best, Audrey. Come on. Whatever it is, you want to start declaring and decreeing in that, in that case. And my, what I'm saying to each and every one of you is Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. If you, we been talking to you about having faith and about believing, what are we believing in? Not just the air, not just in what we want. No, we're believing in what he said. And if God said it, he's got to do it. If God said it, he's got to do it. And that, how do we know we believe? Our actions are being shown in that. Our mouth, our, our mind, our mouth, our movement. Our thoughts, our words, our actions. They are being said in that case. And watch what happens in verse 40, 21. Uh, first of all, before I go to 21, look at verse 20 again. It says that his faith grew stronger, stronger, which means that at one time, even the father of faith had a little faith. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to see this. Even the father of faith had a little faith. Even he was like, eh. <laughs> he did an eh, AJ. Well, y'all see AJ just say, hey, AJ, eh. <laughs> even the father of faith had a little faith, but the Bible says he grew stronger. And when he grew stronger, what happens when we grow in faith? It brings glory to God. To God. Wow. When I believe, it, it, it allows God to be take pleasure in my belief. And then verse 21 says, he was halfly convinced. Fully convinced. Uh, convinced a little bit. Fully convinced. Convinced only on Sunday during the service time. Fully convinced. Convinced only when he saw it. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. <laughs> he was fully convinced that God is able to do right. exactly what he promised. Amen. That means those 6,000 promises, God is able to do. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Go, go to Isaiah 11. I'm sorry, Isaiah 55, 11. All right. So we already know what God is able to do. What well, God is able to do, whatever he promised. God is able to do whatever he promised. We just got to grow in our faith. We got to believe his promises. First of all, you got to know his promises. And knowing the promises is not, not difficult. There's promises contained in throughout the word of God. Amen. And, and knowing them is not difficult. Believing them is where the challenge is. We got to believe God. But in Isaiah 55, 11, we, give some, we get greater insight to what happens uh, when God makes a promise. Ready? We get greater insight. And this is what shall fur, uh, further help you to believe in what God promised. Let's read Isaiah 55, 11. Come on. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. Come on. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Somebody write that down. God's promise is real. We see it here in Isaiah. The prophet is saying, this is what thus saith the Lord. The prophet is prophesying to you live and in color. He says, so the Lord says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me empty, but it will accomplish the thing whereby I have sent it, whereby I purpose it and it shall what? Succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, when we say it's already done, this is what we mean. It is already done. It shall succeed in the thing and for which I sent it. 
You know, I want to lift this up because we see shall in here three times. And the word shall is like a command. It is not something that is questionable. It is not something that is optional. But it means that there is a mandatory action that follows the word shall. I need you to get that deep down in your spirit. I need you <laughs> to know that when God said shall, that means that what he said is mandatory. For oh, glory. It's mandatory for your turn. Come on. It's mandatory for your break. Yes. It's mandatory for your financial freedom. Yes. It's mandatory for you to be stabilized yes. in your mind. It's mandatory for you to be healed and made whole in your body. It is mandatory for you to walk in the full measure of huh. gift, talents, abilities, and the anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage that has previously tried to stop, block, and hinder you. It shall come to pass. It's mandatory. God, if God said it, he believes it. He's waiting for you to believe it. Boy. And that shall settle it. Somebody say, I got a shell on my side. Because when you got a shell on your side, it's mandatory. It has to happen. It has to come to fruition. It's already done. Somebody shout, uh, shall. Come on. Say, it shall be done. Yes. Come on. It shall happen. Yes. It shall come to pass. And guess what? The blessing to every one of you a part of the community, we have a shell. <laughs> Glory. We have a pastor shell. We have a shell. If you understand what I'm saying, already attached to your life. So what is your excuse for not succeeding? What is your excuse? Let me give you one more scripture. One more scripture. One more scripture. Jeremiah 1.12. Now, this is profound. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, we're taking you on a journey throughout the scriptures today to show you faith to faith, moving from faith to faith. When I move from me eh, to I believe, then you will start to see everything God promised in your life. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 12. And as we get ready to go there, let me share this, why this is so important. Because the Lord spoke to me. He says, I'm not doing anything differently than what I always promised to do. What's different is the people who believe me. He said, I always said I'll bring you out. It's just the people who believe enough to bring me in so I can bring them out. To bring me in so I can bring them out. You want to be brought out by your own measures, your own uh, uh, methods, your own meanders, your own. No, bring me in. So through wisdom in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Bring me in so I can bring you out. And he says, this is what I'm going to do. And this is the promise I'm giving to every one of you, just like the prophet Jeremiah. Let's read Jeremiah 1 and 12. Watch what it says here. Come on. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well. For I am already to perform my word. For I am ready to perform my word. And that says, he, now, now let me put it in context because you got to understand that Jeremiah is now being called. And when Jeremiah is now being called uh, uh, the, uh, around the fourth verse, uh, Jesus, uh, the Lord says to Jeremiah, come uh, I, uh, before I formed your mother's womb. I knew you before I ordained you. I made you a prophet into the nations. And Jeremiah began to give a, 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 a interesting discourse with God and say, Lord, I can't do what you're asking me to do. I'm a child. And that says, I'm an experience. And that says, I don't know. How many of you feel that way? God, uh, Pastor says, hey, y'all, we, we we looking at a, 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 a beautiful facility to be our headquarters. And you're saying, well, Pastor, I don't know if we can do that. Why? Because I just can't, I, I can't be a part of that. I, I just don't know. How, no, no, wait a minute. The Lord didn't ask Jeremiah based upon his lack of knowing. He knew where Jeremiah was. He said, Jeremiah, I'm calling you. And then he gives them in the call, he gives them two scenarios, two, two uh, uh, visions. The first, or two, I should say, pawns, if you will. The first thing he does is he shows Jeremiah a tree, a tree that's growing. And he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I, I see a tree that's growing. Now, you got to understand that the tree that is growing in the Hebrew is called Shechem. And this tree that is growing is an almond tree that grew before the new season came in. Uh, uh, that grew before the as if it was watching over the season. Theologians say that this tree represents a watching over. And then when, G, when when Jeremiah tells the Lord, Lord, this is what I see, when he when he showed them these two examples, he said, I'm calling you, but let me give you a real life scenario. Yeah, uh, what do you see? Pointed to the tree. He Jeremiah said, I see the tree. I, I see it, I see the tree watching over. And that's where verse 20, 12 says, and the Lord said unto him, you are right. You have seen well. Just like you've seen this tree watching over the new season, I am ready to perform my word 
that you speak. Now you gotta understand, what he's saying to Jeremiah is, every time you declare my promises, know that I'm backing everything I said. When you speak what I said, I'm telling you, I'm going to do it in your life because you're saying it as, as if I said it. That was this, that was Jeremiah claimed to fame. That's why he was a prophet. He was one who prophesied. I'm trying to deputize you to prophesy in your situation right now. You got to learn how to speak over your situation. Every promise contained in the word. And guess what the promise we got? Guess what the security we got when you speak the promise? Found here. He says, I am ready to perform my word with sign following. I'm watching over my word to perform it. I'm watching over, I'm watching over this word to bring it to pass for you. You know, this brought me to the uh, natural disasters that we just experienced through various storms that have mm -hmm. hit our nation and even Canada. But it showed me how so how is so much power when something is mandatory and there was mandatory evacuation My that God. was given. And when the word was sent out to watch over the people because there was a storm that was coming and they was giving them the word to let them know they was giving them a prophetic word of a mandatory evacuation so that they can be safe. But I'm here to let you know the same way that we can get mandatory evacuations and some not all it also goes by the word of God God has already given you a prophetic word and he said my prophetic word doesn't have a, a mandatory evacuation it has a mandatory elevation ha! your elevation Glory! is mandatory it's been awaiting your arrival but it's according to your belief I'm telling you it's time for you to come higher come on I'm telling you it's time for you to come up yes. I'm telling you it's time to let me in so that I can take you out over and into your place of better. I'm giving you a mandatory elevation because I see a forecast of faith, divine favor and divine influence, divine affluence, divine abundance that's been awaiting your arrival. It is your time. He says, matter of fact, you are overdue. Many of my people, your mandatory elevation has already went ah, out. Glory. I've already decreed it. I've Thank already you, told you. I'm waiting for you to get the revelation and the illumination that you can take heed, that you can take action. The the same way you would do with a mandatory evacuation. He said, do it with the mandatory elevation. I'm calling you out so that I can call you up so that I can elevate you to the place that I have predestined, pre-purposed, pre-orchestrated, and pre-ordained for you to walk in the full measure of your better. But do you believe it? Come on. Do you believe it? I, I love that. Mandatory uh, elevation. Elevations. Mandatory. Mandatory. When we speak God's promises. There are mandatory elevations. You, in essence, and, 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 and I want you to hear this as we come down to the last part of this message. You got to learn to test God. You got to test God. That's what he told the prophet Jeremiah. He said, whatever you speak, understand, I'm watching over my word to perform it. The word that you speak, I'm watching over it to bring it to pass because you will say nothing than what I say. How do we know that? We find that in the fifth, fifth verse of, of, of Jeremiah, uh, the first chapter. Well, he, after he calls him, he says, listen, you're going to go where I tell you to go and you're going to say what I tell you to say. And when you say it, I'm watching over my word to bring it to pass. He said the same thing to you. When we start going around confessing God's mm -hmm. best, over and in our lives. We, you may not understand how it's going to come to pass. Many people don't. Even in the area of giving, when you start uh, decreeing and saying, I'm making a decision, Lord, I'm going to honor you. I'm going to put you first. I'm going to serve. I'm going to bless your kingdom. I'm going to give. I'm going to give charity. I'm going to do these things. He says, now you're doing according to my word. I got to watch over my word to perform it in you. This is why we got to learn to trust God and test him. When I say testing God, I mean it. Again, as we get ready to go to the final part of this message, you know, I was uh, uh, spoken, the Lord told me uh, to, uh, the Lord told me uh, to go forth and study uh, the Jewish people and, and study them and understand, you know, how they operate and how they flow and how they go. And the reason why, because he was trying to teach me a, a principle, a point on principles. He says, even though someone may not be adequately fully walking in the truth if they live by principles they're going to see certain results in their life and that's what we're saying to you we're teaching you how to live by principles from faith to faith and when when my level what i settle for is up here then i start seeing life from up here 
I started experiencing life from up here. So I want to show just a, a quick, 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 quick video. Uh, uh, and I want you to hear this. I want you to pay attention to this because this is all about moving from faith to faith. And we're being challenged in the area of our faith. We're being challenged right now. We're being challenged to change. And change according to what? His promises. Because what God promised, he's able, to, he's able to perform. And if he done it for one, he'll do it for everyone who will believe. Take a look at this. We'll be right back on the other side of this. Wow. All I can say to each and every one of you is this. Make no mistake about it. None of that could be possible unless each person believe that what they took action in, God, according to his promise, will do back unto him. And what we're simply saying as we conclude and close out this message right now is when you move from faith to faith, if the level of faith you're operating on, you're not seeing the results. You're not seeing the full measure or manifestation that the God's will promise. Then it's time to go to the next level. It's time to realize that there's more than before. It's time to understand that God, all he's requiring is for you to believe him. And how do you know if you really believe him? The actions that follow. The actions that follow. When the Lord spoke to me to, 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 to study uh, the Jewish principles of how people were walking in their manifestation, it literally, and I could have said, well, God, I know this stuff. I, I, I know it. I, it's all in the word of God. But to see it actually play out where they've been challenged, where even when it comes to ministry, their synagogue leader or pastor, as we know it, will come to them and say, what are you pledging for the year? Not for the month, not what are you going to give according to where you are. What are you pledging for the year? And many of them who says, well, we can't do it. And you hear all of them says, well, no one stood up there and said, yeah, I'll give anything you want. No, they were like, eh, I don't know. Or they, yeah, they, they, they eh. <laughs> but they followed through because they believe God. They believe God. They believe that what I make happen for God's house, he will make happen for mine. Ladies and gentlemen, all we're simply saying to you is when you begin to believe God according to his truth, you will see God move according to your faith. And that's the key. It's already done. Yes. Your next level is already laid out. Your healing is already present. Your increase, your financial increase is already there. You know, uh, I, you know, I was joking around growing up. I, I grew up from the euphemism that when your hand itch, that means money's on the way, right? Now, I don't know how true that is or not. Hey, I like to believe it is. Why? Because my hand's been itching, you know? So I like to believe it is, right? But my point is, here's the reality. Whether or not it itch or not, didn't matter. I'm already convinced according to what he has promised in his word, Luke 6.38. As we get ready to give our offerings for today, he said, give and I'll give back unto you. How? Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we close out this message, it's offering time. It's time for us to give unto the Lord. And we want you uh, to not only look at where you are and determine your giving from there, but look at where you want to be and determine your giving from there. Because when you look at where you want to be, you determine you're given from there. Now it's up to God to show you that his promises work, to show you that he's in control. And if you want to see the next level, ladies and gentlemen, this requires for all of us to take action. Come on. Don't, don't, no, it's not a time to, to front it or fake it, but to believe it and to take it all that God has promised for us. So as we get ready to give, Pastor, we're going to share the ways that we can give. And once we begin to do that, we're then going to pray, give you a time to give. We're going to pray and give the final benediction in prayer. And again, thank you all for being here. Amen. We thank you all for tuning in on today, but we're most excited to see the action that you're going to take by being able to hear the testimonies that are going to come forth from you believing and you being so that you can start seeing. You can give through these various measures so that you can begin to see better in your life. You can go to betterlifeseeker.com, click on donate. You can also go to uh, cash out, which is dollar sign better life increase. You can also give by Bitcoin again at betterlifeseeker.com when you click on donate. You can also give on mail, which uh, the address is going to show up on the screen, or you can give through Zelle. We have various ways for you 
to give. But the key thing is, is to go before God in the mindset, the heart set, and the handset of giving. Through Zell, you could give at Better Life the Movement at gmail.com. That's Better Life the Movement at gmail.com. Or you could give via mail PO Box 9134, Spring, Texas, 77387. But the key thing is to not just be get, uh, seen giving, but to give cheerfully. That's right. God loves a cheerful giver. And those who are cheerful, he declares a promise that he will give seed to the sower, not just to those who give, but to those who are givers. Can you declare that in the atmosphere? I am a giver. Now, we want you to join us in this time of worship as we declare God to continuously to turn it around open up the windows of heaven to pour us out a blessing that we cannot sustain, that we can let it rain in financial abundance. God bless you all and let's worship together in this time of giving. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you. Yes. We thank the Lord for the gifts that we have given. And again, we ask you to give freely. We ask you to give you, you see, there was no uh, amount. There was no challenge. There was simply you understanding, responding to God saying, Lord, you are that worthy. It's a matter of your faith. That's why we give freely. And I thank God to be a part of a ministry that my arm is not twisted on whether I should give or not, but I'm taught the truth and I respond in kind according to my faith. And ladies and gentlemen, that is needed, necessary, and important for you to realize the power of your giving in that way. All right. And listen, I can't wait uh, uh, as we get ready for the new year. Uh, amen. I'm gonna, like, like, I, like the Lord spoke to me to, to study the principles of the Jews. I'm going to be meeting with you all uh, to see, hey, what are we pledging for the coming year? I'm going to be doing that. Why is that important? Because if you are already not set or not focused on supporting the kingdom, then asking God to support you is unfair. Think about that. Mm -hmm. How can we ask God, Lord, I need your help. But when God says, will you, work for, will you work for my kingdom? Will you work for my work? Will you support the ministry going forth? And all your gifts that comes into this ministry helps us to do ministry from ministry operations to outreach to all the things we're planning on to do, even in the time to come. So please make no mistake, nothing you give here can ever be wasted. And God has to, according to what he promised, rewards you uh, back 20, 40, 60, 100 fold, four times giving back unto you from that which you give. So again, we want to thank you because yes. it's your gifts that makes ministry possible. As we get ready to pray over your gifts, we also want to pray the benediction. So we we'll actually give us a few moments as we get ready to close out for my time today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every person, every one of us who have sown a seed in this ministry. Father, the sacrifices we have made to do so, we know you see it. We know you honor it. And we know that you're going to reward us as a result of it. Now, God, continue to bless the works of our hands and the efforts of our hearts. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us a place where we not only can be taught in the truth, but we can apply the principles of you to our lives to see the manifestation happen within our lives. Thank you for the flurry of testimonies that are coming forth of those who you have blessed because they have done their best to put you first. They have priori prioritized you. That's why, God, we are determined now to seek first your kingdom and righteousness and knowing all things shall be added unto us because you promised it. And as we read today in your word, that, Lord God, no word that we speak, no promise we stand on, we declare will not come back unto us void but it will yeah. accomplish the things whereby it has been sent. So God, we thank you for that. Yes. Now, Father, bless your people. We pray for every person who's gathered here today, that, Father, they've been challenged or stirred in their faith to believe you for more, to stand on your word, to stand on your promises, to know that all that you promise, you are able to perform. Hallelujah. And just like Abram, who, who, uh, uh, who did not stagger, at the promises of you, but grew in faith. We pray, God, that you allow us to grow in our faith to believe. Yes. Every challenge of our life, help us to know it can be better. Mm -hmm. Every situation we're facing, help us to be convinced things can be turned around. And as we begin to do that, we too will testify like those we saw in the video of how we tested you and you came back true 
tested, tried, and true are you. And we want you to do that in our lives. Be that in our lives. All for your glory. Now, Father, thank you for our gathering. Thank you for every person who tuned in. Thank you for those souls that have, who have made a decision to make you their Lord. And those who have made the decision, we ask you at this time to repeat after us, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I repent of my sins. Of my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I make you my Lord and, and from this day forth, this day forth I, believe I believe that better living, that better living is what you're, giving, is what you're giving. And I'm ready for my portion. I'm ready for my portion. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name I am, I am saved. saved. I am, I am saved. saved. If you have said that prayer, that prayer is well. We want to hear from you. Visit us online, betterlifeseeker.com slash salvation. Let us know. Yeah. You said yes to Christ. And I want you to get ready. Because now comes your better life. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here today. And let us walk in our generosity as God continues to bless us with prosperity that we can have mandatory elevation. That's, I can't wait. That, that's a whole series by itself, Pastor Shell. Uh, you need to teach that. <laughs> mandatory elevation. It's already done. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.